Moscow has spent years attempting to restore the industry that once brought the Soviet Union so much glory. Though it has recovered from the Soviet Union's fall and rebuilt itself as a global power, the Russian rockets have recently experienced a string of embarrassing defeats. It's possible that the Russian rocket industry could soon collapse unless some sort of miracle arises. Find out everything about this in today's episode of Meta Tech. First of all, many individuals have questioned the continued existence of the Soviet spacecraft Workhorse Soyuz. The first astronaut to fly in the capsule perished in it, and it later took part in one of the greatest accidents in the annals of space travel. However, despite being an outdated piece of Cold War technology, the Soyuz spacecraft has developed a spectacular reputation and has surpassed far more expensive and complicated vehicles like the Space Shuttle. However, the Soyuz's future is currently in doubt. Some experts predict that Elon Musk and other business people in the United States will soon replace the vessel with less expensive spacecraft. Sergei Korolev, a Soviet rocket engineer, created the foundation for the Soyuz in 1962. It was intended for the vehicle to serve as a spacecraft that would send Soviet cosmonauts to the moon. An unmanned version was launched on November 28, 1966, with the intention of carrying out a date, and a second Soyuz was scheduled to launch the next day. However, the flight was aborted after the crowd systems malfunctioned minutes after entering orbit. One person was killed when a follow-up mission's launcher burst on the launch site. The first man-made Soyuz was launched in April 1967 thanks to the Soviet Union's perseverance. But the descending capsule's parachute did not deploy, causing the spacecraft to crash upon re-entry, killing Vladimir Komarov, the lone crew member. Even though the Soviet Union had fallen behind the United States in the race to the moon by that point, flights resumed 18 months later, and Soyuz eventually entered regular service. Nevertheless, they managed to develop one unexpected mission using a Soyuz variant known as Zond 5. In September 1968, Zond 5 took flight. Following its success, cosmonaut Alexei Leonov pushed for a quick follow-up mission to round the moon and come back to Earth in order to beat America, which was preparing its own lunar circumnavigation mission called Apollo 8 for December. Leonov was denied permission, and as a result, America was the first to land on the moon, according to Baker, even though they didn't do so until Apollo 11's landing in July of 1969. In the end, the Russians were simply more circumspect. Russia focused on human space station development and Earth orbit missions after losing the race to the moon. Soyuz ended up being the workhorse during those trips, despite another devastating disaster. Viktor Pasetviv, Georgi Dobrovsky, Vladislav Volkov, and the other three crew members on board, Soyuz 11 perished in 1971 when the capsule rapidly lost pressure. They were the only human deaths in space, occurring as they were about to re-enter the atmosphere. All previous fatalities on spacecraft have occurred on Earth's surface. Since then, Soyuz has developed a reputation for dependability and safety, despite the fact that the fall to Earth is still an exciting experience according to Sharmin. Five times as much gravity is felt thanks to the G-force. As the spaceship enters the atmosphere, it heats up and begins to glow in part of its outer shell as pieces begin to burn off. You next experience a side-to-side -side jerk as the parachute opens. It's a jarring and uneven ride. Despite its drawbacks, this style of manned spacecraft has persisted for decades until the SpaceX trampoline began operating more effectively. In the aftermath of Russia's war in Ukraine, Soyuz prospects have been severely damaged. The country is moving to rework commercial contracts, halt deliveries, and effectively seize property from Western customers, which has caused the industry to lose faith in Russia and its iconic rocket. According to Caleb Henry, a senior analyst at the research and advising firm Quality Analytics, the Russian government essentially destroyed the Soyuz's commercial potential. As a result of Russia's action, the Soyuz may no longer be employed as a launch vehicle in other parts of the world. In addition, there are considerable worries over the Soyuz rocket 
and the so used spacecraft's dependence on Germany for fuel. The problem is that a certain grade of highly refined hydrogen peroxide must be used to burn your thrust on the Soyuz boosters and the day-orbit engines of the Soyuz MS spacecraft. However, the German company Ebonic Resource Efficiency must offer chemicals for the synthesis of this hydrogen peroxide in Russia. International sanctions on the Russian Federation place restrictions on these delivery. That is, the West is capable of quickly halting Russian space launches. Regerson was wrong, as evidenced by Roscosmos ceasing to export rocket engines to the United States. According to U.S. Air Force Secretary Frank Kindle, the choice made by Russia will not have an impact on U.S. national security launches. That's because they have SpaceX, I suppose. SpaceX creates and produces its own rocket motors. Additionally, they created the first methane engine ever to fly. Yup, we're talking about the Raptor engine. At the rate of producing an engine per day, SpaceX not only has enough engines to power its own rockets, it can supply other parties. Therefore, Russian's decision makes no sense to the US. Russian space, on the other hand, depends on the US buying its rocket engines, so the decision to stop exporting has exhausted an already limited source of revenue. The industry, which has been severely harmed by Western sanctions, is now getting harder and harder due to the shrinking availability of financial resources. So, with no foreign funding as previously, how will Soyuz proceed? Hopefully the situation won't be too bad. Angara of 5 Russia's replacement for the famous proton rocket, is much worse for poor Russia than Soyuz. The lengthy development project has moved slowly. 2014 saw the debut of the Angara of 5 which successfully launched a two-ton mass simulator into geosynchronous orbit. However, it took another six years before a second development flight was placed in December 2020. The rocket successfully launched a mass simulator weighing 2.4 tons into orbit, making the voyage a success once more. But why are flights spaced so far apart? Difficulties with production costs and a lack of demand are also issues. The cost of manufacturing the Angara of 5 was likely the largest factor, notwithstanding the Russian government's lack of communication. Russian media reported that the Angara production cost to date is approximately $100 million per vehicle. The Russian space program had hoped to make the Angara of 5 competitive with SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket for commercial launch. The Angara of 5 rocket appeared to be on schedule to resume operations in December 2021 as technicians prepped it for its third and final development flight. The mass simulator and per se upper stage were deployed, and the RD0124 engine then executed a typical first burn, failed attempt at a second fire to raise the payload's stable orbit. Russian business watchers continue to doubt these official claims. Andrei Onin, a member of the Russian Academy of Cosmonautics, claims that Angara has little chance of winning the competition. Iron N claimed that Russia's proposal to lower the price of the Angara 5 rocket is an attempt to confuse the public with false information. In his opinion, the rocket will never be able to compete with the reusable Falcon 9 rocket. It would appear that Russia's new rocket costs significantly more than the Proton rocket it is replacing. This occurs at a time when there is a fiercer than ever international pricing rivalry, dominated by SpaceX, but also involving Japan's H3 and Europe's Ariane 6 launcher. The current Deputy Prime Minister for Space and Defense Yuri Borisov has been appointed as Dmitry Ragozin's replacement. Roscosmos Borisov's potential as a director is unknown, and right now it would be too tough to save Russian rockets. And that pretty much concludes today's episode. Don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Your encouragement inspires us to produce more high-quality content like this episode. Before we wrap up, it would mean the world to us if you all pounded the like and subscribe button. Our hearts are always full from your care, enthusiasm, and support. I guess it's farewells for now. Till the next video drop, you all take care.